Hello everybody. Just got home from work a few minutes ago and trying to do some evening chores even though it's 100 degrees out here. But um, we've noticed a little bit of damage on some of the leaves of our apple trees and haven't noticed a lot of damage in the garden but just going to go ahead and hit that and be proactive as well. I'm about to spray uh, some neem oil and just kind of show you a little bit of what we did in Florida to help with bugs. Tut, tut, tut. Tut, tut, tut. And uh, just show you what I'm going to do to try to help with uh, some of these pest pressures. My little assistant here, Campton, has got his sprayer. Are you ready to make some stuff to keep the bugs away? All right. What we have here, we have some neem oil. Uh, and I have like a natural Daddy. soap Daddy. here. It's everyone brand Daddy. hand soap and Daddy. this soap is uh, You know uh, what buddy? I'm supposed to do it. I'm okay, hold on. I'll tell you this soap is pretty natural um, And it's uh, it's got spearmint and lemongrass in it, which can also help uh, with the repellent and Then I got some water right here and we're about to mix it up. Kim, then you hold the bottle for me. Daddy, can you I hold squeeze? it nice and still. All right. Daddy, Daddy, can I I got it. Not yet. Not yet. No, you hold the bottle. You hold the bottle. All right. Daddy's going to unscrew that, the pump. Now you hold it up here, Nugget, and let's put some water in it. All right. So we're putting some warm water in here. Are you guys going to be my helpers? Daddy, Kara, I'm you going to. Okay. Her, Kara, you hold the pump. You're going to be my helper. You hold that. Oh. All right. Daddy. Try to get that hay off of there. And Canton, you hold that. So we're going to fill that. Um, most of the way um, with warm water. One thing is I always forget is the pump. Look, Kara, we got to show the camera. The pump takes up a lot of volume in your container. And I always forget when you're filling up these sprayers, you don't want to fill it all the way up top because when you go to put your pump in there, it splashes out and overfills. So I usually fill it up to about here. And there's actually, I think, a line on there that tells you that's your fill line. So I usually fill it to about there and then I'm good to go. You got something sticky on you? No, not yet. Not until you put the pump on. Alright, hold it there. Nugget, you're doing a great job. Is it getting heavy? Yes. Use your muscles. You can do it. We'll stop right there. Alright, I'll help you set it down. Alright, now someone has to hold it there so it don't get knocked over. First, we're going to put in some of this soap. And this will help dissolve the neem oil into the rest of the water and I'm not measuring anything but if you look online there's plenty of measurements for how much soap how much neem oil and all that good stuff then how do you mix all it right. up daddy? I put a pretty good bit of soap in there hold on we're gonna put our neem oil open this up this hasn't been open for a long time I don't oh, think it, we haven't yeah. opened this since Florida so you can see it's still pretty full in there this stuff does not pour good out of this bottle. So I try to put about, I think, two to four tablespoons worth in there. Sounds about right. I looked it up a long time ago what the exact measurement is supposed to be, and I've kind of eyeballed it ever since. <laughs> now I shake it when something All right. up. So now we want to shake it really good. Can I shake it? All right, now let's go spray some trees. You want to pump it? You want to pump some? Oh yeah. Okay, you pump some. Oh, that's pumped good. All right, let's lock the handle. All right, you pick that up and carry it. And let's go spray some trees. Well, we definitely got some spots on the leaves. Have to look up what that is, but look here. Something's been eating that one. And is it bad stuff, Casey? Bad stuff. I uh, think something's bad, been eating that one, that maybe. Bugs on our that trees. one. So because something's had bad, some nibbles bad, on it. This one, bad. something ate that leaf pretty much mostly gone. Right there. So let's go ahead and spray. When you spray, this is how you're going to spray. Watch, back up. You're going to spray like this. Ah, you got me. See that? Do you see what I did? Mm -hmm. Maybe Daddy, a little more at the top. Daddy, the bug spray touched me. They won't hurt you.
gonna get some stuff done on this beautiful Saturday morning and uh, right now we're in the middle of a dragonfly exodus which seems to happen once a year because we had the same thing around this time last year which we love them because they're little mosquito eating machines and uh, to be honest with you we barely have any mosquitoes here where we live um, we had way way more mosquitoes in Florida that we were used to and here I gotta be honest with you I think and over the year we've lived here I think we've seen a handful of mosquitoes let's talk about right here this section hasn't been used at all and see all this grass growing in here this was the first section we did that we after the whole garden was double dug tilled and then composted we put all a layer of compost on here and we put mulch here and I think the difference between this area and that area is I think we put the mulch too thin in this area we're barely having a problem with grass all over in that area but this was the first section we did and I think we did it too thin so what I'm getting ready to do is I'm gonna grab my trusty sprayer and I'm getting ready to show you a awesome super easy natural weed and grass killer and we're gonna go in here we're gonna kill all this grass and then we're gonna smother it we're gonna put another layer of mulch down and hopefully that smothers it out so let's go all right so here's my sprayer and what I have here is a, a big gallon bottle of white vinegar and then I just have some cheap dish soap and we're not going to use a whole lot of this just a little bit we're going to use this whole bottle of vinegar and we are not going to thin it with water we're going to use it straight the sprayer I'm using is the one we use in the garden all the time um, sometimes we'll put just water in it to water our rows just to help them germinate um, and then I also put in here peppermint soap and neem oil there's some residue in there and that's what we use to spray on our plants to keep bugs away which is a natural uh, uh, organic type of pest control so there'll be some residue in here from that neem oil which would be beneficial to the garden too so get my vinegar pop the top take a swig first no I'm just kidding if you're gonna try this buy the cheap vinegar you don't need to buy your expensive organic apple cider vinegar the mother just buy the good old cheap stuff I think you can get this at Walmart for two dollars a gallon then I'm gonna put a little squig in there about like that that's good that was probably a tablespoon of soap maybe a little more put my pump on here now I'm gonna shake it up a little bit I want to get that soap to suds up and start incorporating with all the vinegar and I'm just gonna warn you when you do this it smells really strong there's something about mixing the straight vinegar with that soap that makes the odor even more pungent and like aerated and it will almost and I don't want I don't want it to sound dangerous or anything because I'm sure I'm certain it's not but it will almost burn your nose let's get started so plenty of grass not a whole lot of weeds there's one piece of ragweed there there's a little bit of there's a little bit of carpet weed there there's a piece of ragweed but and then there's a couple horse nettles over there let me show you those horse nettles because I'm going to show you these up close after I've sprayed them with the vinegar and soap so you can see a really good before and after <laughs> I guess I underestimated how much I had grass wise so um, that ran out and I was only able to do half but what this will do is give you a really good side by side I'm gonna come back later and show you the after but I've done from here all the way to about here in the middle so I done I sprayed all those weeds heavily with it and 
this side over I haven't sprayed. So we'll come back and uh, show you the difference. Uh, one thing I will add if you want to consider trying this is that it's best to do it early in the morning or like midday on a sunny day uh, because you want it to stay on the leaves and you want the, the leaves to get hammered by the sun and it works together to, to kill the plant. So uh, we'll show you in a little bit, see what it looks like. Here's the follow up. Yesterday I brought you out here and showed you my vinegar mixture that I was gonna spray the garden with and I told you I only was able to spray about half the garden and I ran out and uh, I think you'll be surprised the results. Remember this half is the half that I sprayed with the vinegar mixture wherever there was grass or weeds this has half over here I ran out and I didn't get to spray so look at that um, now there were some places that obviously need to get sprayed again or I should have sprayed a little heavier maybe I was a little too uh, a little too light-handed with it but it, it really works and it's pretty amazing for something as natural as vinegar and a little dish soap now the dish soap I used wasn't a particularly natural one, but then again, I didn't put very much in there. I mean, I probably put the equivalent of one or two tablespoons. Uh, I showed you a close up of some horse nettle that was growing in here. Here's the after on that. That's after being sprayed with vinegar. Here's some of that carpet weed that I sprayed. See that? Now, whatever this grass is right here, I sprayed that I want to say I think I at least sprayed this this one maybe I think all these and it, it really had little to no effect so whatever this grass is um, it's probably just going to be pulled or burned and it has no problem with the vinegar uh, I don't know if that's like a fescue or eastern gamma grass or orchard grass I'm still trying to learn my grasses but anyway the vinegar had really no effect now, if you come over here to where there was a bunch of Bermuda uh, growing in here, it did work quite a bit. Um, you could see right here that, uh, some of the areas I sprayed. You can kind of tell where you sprayed heavily and then where you didn't spray so good. So it killed a lot of this, but there's definitely some green here that still needs to be sprayed and killed. Um, and then my thought is, you know, grass is, grass is a pain in the butt to pull. A lot of other weeds are real easy to pull. Even like this horse nettle, you could slap a glove on and go pull all these horse nettles up in just a couple minutes. But grass is a pain. So my goal was to kill it all as dead as possible, as naturally as possible, and then cover it up with a new layer of mulch so we can plant in this section. So I got a little more work to do to kill this section. And I got some more vinegar, so we will get it done. But just thought I'd share that neat tip with you. If you've never tried spraying stuff just with white vinegar, it's amazing and it really works. It really works. The other thing is, is that the garden is doing surprisingly good, you know, with the back to Eden technique with very little watering. Um, most everything that has germinated or come up, we watered when they were seeds or when they were little. And then after that, just kind of whatever the rain gave us. So it's doing pretty good and we're in a little bit of a drought right now i mean we've barely had any rain in the past probably two months um at least a month long with none and lately when there's been storms or showers they've been very scattered and they keep missing us by like a hair and here's another good example today i mean we might get lucky and get some but over to the north uh here we have a really good storm brewing and there's all kinds of thunder and stuff and you can tell in some places it looks like rain's already fallen but uh, I think that's just gonna skate past us and blow east and then you see beautiful blue sky with just a little bit of clouds and then over here here's another storm and that's just blowing east too and I've been able to see lightning and some rain from that uh, south of us and that one's just blowing east so here we are right here in a little our, our little mountain and we're just splitting the difference between these two separate thunderstorms if you look over here the watermelons pumpkins 
melons, honeydews, uh, and what else? Oh, birdhouse gourds. These are all birdhouse gourds right here. They're doing amazing. I mean, they're just thriving. I came out here the other day and this back section over there, I tried to prune and, um, and get all my runners to go this way over in this clear area of mulch. And it was a lot of work and I got maybe almost halfway and I have some more to do. I'm gonna come out here and get all my runners to go this way instead of going that way into the rest of the garden. And I'm going to uh, continue to prune um, like suckers or any that don't have fruit or flowers. I'm just gonna go ahead and prune them. Over here was a whole row of tomatoes and only three came up. You can see there's that one right there that's doing pretty good. There's a smaller one and then a medium one none of that whole row of tomatoes none of them came up over here we got yellow squash and it's jamming pretty good there is a uh, one plant over there that's probably got uh, four or five yellow squash on it that might be ready in just a couple days and then all the rest of these squash plants all have probably anywhere from four to ten yellow squash on them so we're gonna have a bunch of yellow squash um, if you notice, there's some rows where stuff didn't come up. This whole row, everything we planted in our garden was direct seeded. We started late. We didn't buy any starts. We just wanted to use the seeds we have. We direct seeded everything. So I don't know if maybe something got in here and ate some of the seeds or if we just didn't have germination. But there's some whole rows of stuff we planted that are non-existent. This whole row right here was lettuce and two of these lettuces, I think these are muscaline, came up. The rest of them did not. This whole row here was peppers. There's one little tiny pepper plant down there. The rest of this row did not germinate. And I don't, I don't remember what this entire row was, but nothing came up. And I can tell you here, um, this whole row, I believe is some zucchini and squashes. Only some of those came up. And then this row over here is some more zucchini and different squashes. These whole two rows were carrots. And, um, I think that a rabbit has been able to jump through the fence because we did see some carrots germinate and come up in this row real small. And I think some rabbits have been able to jump through uh, the electric netting and they nibbled down all those carrots that came up. So I think one day we're going to use some of that um, black plastic fine mesh that we had used around the fruit trees when we first planted them. It's got like a half inch hole in that mesh. I think we're gonna go around the entire inside of the garden fence, putting that mesh up just to keep uh, future rabbits out. Look at that little beauty. Beautiful little cute. That is a, that reminds me of Catchy, a little fat chubby little thing. What else we got in here? These are supposed to be good for pickling. And it's pretty obvious which one it is. So let's give it a twist and flick. Here, that looks ready. There we go. I mean, could you not be more happy with a squash plant? Yeah, one. This thing is just exploding with squash. Pumpkin. 
I would say it's a pretty good success for our first try up here, wouldn't you? I think so. But we're going to continue to plant a little bit more to have a nice fall crop. So we were just wrapping up harvesting some of our first produce from the garden and doing some video to show you guys and absolutely amazingly beautiful a giant hummingbird moth came to visit our garden to drink nectar and i think i got some incredible footage check this out there he is <laughs> 